don't like it. I'll make that. All right. Oh, my bad. Let yeah, me know when we're... Hair. Okay. All right, y'all. Welcome back to another Fucked and Revive. We're joined here with a whole new set of people, so let's get some introductions. I'm Valeria. I'm Oswin. I'm Josh. I'm Josiah. I'm David. All right, so today we're going to be going on John chapter 9, but before we get started, let's get a little recap of John chapter 8. Valeria, you were here last time, so what do you remember from, from the last one? Uh, I remember... He had run away. He ran away. Well, he didn't run away, but like, cause they were about to get him. Mm -hmm. And um, they were asking him many questions and accusing him of things, and he yep. responded very intellectually. Yeah, very patiently. That was something that Gavin was bringing up last week. That he loved how. How patient and how loving he would he would uh, answer them, even though they were trying to like dig a hole into him and make him look like this bad guy, right? And so now we're going on to John chapter nine. And before we get started, do we have any praises or prayer requests mm, for being here? For being here. What about you, Sai? Well, I'm happy all my grades are all good now. Yeah. What about you back there, Elias? You mean nothing? Gus? You guys are doing a good job today. Thank Great you, kids. Jocelyn. For your dad's safety. For your dad's safety. What's your name, bro? I don't, I don't know your name, bro. Ernesto. What is it? Ernesto. Ernesto. Okay, Ernesto, what you got? Uh, I hope that we can all have a great day after this. Amen. What about you, Isaac? Well, I think I got to hang out with David for a little while yesterday. Got to go oh, yeah. Y'all yeah, went to the gym. How'd that go? Good. Is David strong? He died. <laughs> <laughs> big, big boy. Really? Hey, it's all right. <laughs> you work. Adrian? Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Adrian, anything? Ah, uh, just, uh, just praying for the spiritual growth in this church. Amen. Valeria. Um, my choir journey. That we're having a bunch of competitions and yeah. my friends, their safety. And my boy Moswin. Oh, I'm glad to be here again. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. And I just want to thank you guys for all being here, and for allowing me to be in a position to be able to speak and. Do what, do what has to be done. So thank you guys. And so, David, would you like to lead us in prayer? It doesn't have to be too, too complicated. It's just simple. Thank you. Thank you for letting us all be here. Thank you for letting your word touch our hearts today. And thank you for your mercy. Amen. Amen. All right, so like we always do, we're going to start on John chapter 9, and we'll go verse by verse, starting Valeria, and then moving to your right. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. There you go, Martha. So you'll read. Okay. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world remember seven six six okay. when he had said these things he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and anointed, anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay he told him go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. And therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, it is, not, is it not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said thou unto him, How are, the, how are thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Verse 12. Mm. Next page. Oh, okay. mm, right Where is he now, they asked. I don't know, he replied. All right, so we have this guy, right? And he, what was he? He was blind. blind, blind, right? And so Jesus had healed him. How do you heal him? Clay. Yeah, there you go. So he spat in the mud, he created clay and put over his eyes. So what do you guys think about about this whole situation that we just read? What do y'all think about that? Valeria, go. What do you think? Uh, the fact that he killed him with saliva. That was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so does that like, 
what does that make you think like that the fact that it was spit that he used to to heal this man um i think it's fascinating because well it's his saliva so it's like you know anything of you know jesus of god is what will heal you Mm -hmm. and like like the simplest thing of him like his own spit it's like it's like normally that's something that's just disgusting that's that's kind of disrespectful to be honest if you think about it but such a little thing of of the importance of jesus was able to heal this man who was blind from birth right and i think that's amazing so what do you think muslim from what you read oh um i mean i think that yeah the saliva was it just um it's a, such a simple thing but it held uh, so much power in it mm -hmm. which uh, i was seeing is like um god seeing the weakness in this man and giving and um using this man to display his power facts facts Josiah. well like they were saying how he heals him with the uh, saliva mm -hmm. spit i thought it was pretty interesting because like back in the other chapters how he just touched them and yeah. yeah they got healed but he used his own like spit in that just, yeah that that is i did notice that what do you think david um, i think it's funny because it's like when you see god's true love Mm -hmm. for the first time mm. and his just yeah yeah and so there's something that stuck out to me it says uh i must work the works of him who sent me is verse four while it is day the night is coming when no one can work so do you guys like understand what he means by that that the, there's a the night is coming where where no one can work mm. what do you think isaac um so he's saying the night is coming um meaning kind of like maybe it's friday getting toward dusk and everything when the sabbath starts to begin mm -hmm. so maybe he's saying that as the jewish law makes it so you can't um do work and labor as the well, the priest would think so, mm -hmm. and he he's kind of trying to keep it within their laws, so it doesn't cause much attention. Well, I would, I would like that. That's great, but as we keep reading, we see that it was actually on Sabbath that he healed him. So, it kind of yeah. So, what y'all think? What do you, what do you think the night represents? I think it represents. Wait, what, what verse? Uh, verse four. The, I think it means the end, mm -hmm. or like the beginning of of a new dawn in sense of he's coming back. Okay. Did you get it? Yeah, I understand what you mean. That's that's you're literally like on the on the lines there. So I was reading a, a commentary actually, and it said that the so you know how they say Jesus is the light, right? Jesus is the light. It says in the scripture, and so the night is when he actually goes back up to heaven. And he goes yes. back up to the Father into his throne. And so that, that there will be a time where when he leaves, the people will be by themselves mm -hmm. and they'll have to trust in God, no, not their own works and their own understandings, right? And so that's, that's really dope to me how, how he's like, um, how do you say it? What is it called? Oh, prophesizing, right? Is that mm -hmm. when you tell the future? Yeah, he's like prophesizing when he would leave, right? And so I think that's pretty cool. So we stopped off on verse 12, I believe. Oh, oh Adrian? It asks, why would the disciples ask uh, Jesus, uh, who sinned, his parents or him? Oh, okay. What do y'all think? Okay, so I get what they mean, because if he was born blind, mm -hmm. they would think that, you know, they had probably had well, sinned, well, everyone sins, but, you know, they had sinned so badly that their son had came out blind, mm -hmm. and that, like, you know, that was their mistake that they made. Or, like, for the son, he did something, well, not the son. If, like, that's why they're asking the question, because would it be the parents or the son? Because the son was born blind, but he couldn't possibly have done anything in the womb, right? Exactly. So it would have been the parents, and I guess that I think that's why they're asking, but at the same yeah. time, it doesn't make sense, because that's kind of not how it works. Yeah, it's not, because God, God doesn't... So all the evil things and all the suffering, that doesn't come from God, right? right. That comes from Satan. And so why would why would this man have all this suffering for his entire life literally from birth if if it had come from god right. that makes sense you know i don't understand why he would do that what do you think gus or jocelyn so if you look back at the olden days or the bible times when someone was born crippled or mm -hmm. was crippled it's mm -hmm. because they actually did something mm -hmm. so everyone assumed let's say valerie you're crippled 
But you Always. didn't do anything. So, Joshua, <laughs> you're crippled, but you did a big sin. Yeah. So everyone would excuse, assume that you did a bad sin. Yeah. So, so that's how they thought it. Thought about it. I'm crippled. I didn't do nothing. You did something. You're crippled. Yeah. So it's like blaming me for something you've done. Exactly. And so they would see it so. as like anybody. So I was reading also that they would see the people who were who were placed like have bad situations going in their life. They think that it'd come from them being guilty of doing something. And they think that it's like because they're a bad person, that was a punishment for the sins. That's just how the Jews taught and, and that's how they lived. And so Gus... Keep in mind, Jesus, it was always a certain form of edification from man towards Jesus. And man always attempts to, attempts to focus on guilt. Mm -hmm. So what better way of having Jesus connect this guilt to this man or to his parents so that they can better understand why he's blind? Jesus didn't fall for that. Jesus instead says, focus on what the works that are going to happen yeah. at this point. Again, Edifying man to man in favor of Jesus. There you go. Boom. So I'm pretty sure that answers her question of Elisa. All right. So we'll move on to verse 13. I'll start. Um, so they brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And then again, the prophecy also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep on the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, What's your opinion about this man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents said it. His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not one thing. I know that. Whereas, whereas I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? Look, the man exclaimed, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? All right, so, I don't know. He has, he has, I don't know about y'all. It looks like he's had some sass to him now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I think it's cool how, like, how before he was this crippled old man with no voice or anything and then once Jesus came into his life he he had a new confidence he had a new uh, like a aura of him and he even talked back to these Pharisees who would even like who would kill you honestly for yeah. what he just did and so what do y'all what do y'all think about that David mm, he's no longer afraid he's no longer afraid amen I thought it was pretty brave of him you guys back oh, yeah. then if you like talk back or anything they would just wipe you out like yep. that yeah no, that's pretty <laughs> brave but scary for him yeah ernesto what you got well honestly that pretty was that was brave because well like they said back in the old times like whatever you just said to a pharisee like talking back um anything that that they think that's bad to them they would just instantly like Destroy yeah. They wouldn't even give you a second chance. Yeah, they wouldn't. And so, why do you, why do you why do you guys think that they did, that they didn't just 
kill him right there. Well, because he wanted. Well, because it was like linked to Jesus, the man who like you know called himself like the Son of God. Exactly. It's like they want to find out more of this guy. They want to get rid of him. Yes. Yeah. So they're gonna, well, basically use this man to find out where he is, uh, find out what happened, and use it against him somehow. They'll make up a way. And I think it's funny how, how literally they these guys these Pharisees who thought they were at the top they they were the guys who created the rules basically enforced them and made it their own way. They went through all this trouble just to figure out who this man was who healed this man. They even went to the point where they contacted the blind man's parents just to get an account to see what had happened. Isn't that crazy? So that kind of shows like like they're desperate, right? And so I think I think that really 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 shows what Jesus' presence can do to somebody. Somebody so so hard hearted as like the Pharisees, he he kind of cracked at them a little bit, and now they're just so so um, curious per se, and they're just questioning, and now now they're you know they're they're seeing a different something different than what they're used to. Yeah, they don't like it. And they don't like it at all. So they want to get rid of it. Boom! So they try to get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. They have Sir. A question. Um, <clears throat> this person asked, "Do you think the Pharisees were somehow jealous?" Most they definitely. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Talk, yeah. talk to talk to the to They're people. Them, huh? yeah. They were jealous because they weren't getting the attention they once had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. What you got, Mazma? Oh, uh, I said I think they were jealous because of power. Yeah. They yeah. saw they saw they were uh, threatened by the power of someone else that could um, help the weakness. And, and Ernesto, what you got? Well, just like what they both said, they were jealous of power, they were jealous of the attention, and I also think, like, they're also jealous of Jesus, like they're trying to get better than Jesus, yeah. to show that he is wrong, but they know they can't do that, so that's why they're trying to get rid of him. And, and for yeah. perspective, it, it literally said a few verses ago that nobody had ever done anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so now they're seeing that this man's doing something that they've never seen ever before in their life that not even themselves who think they're the most high can do. And so it's very much fair to say that they're jealous of what he's doing and, and the the attention he's grabbing, you know? Can I and real quick? Yeah. One thing I thought was pretty interesting is how they asked his parents and they said, oh, talk to him because he's of age. Well, one reason I think they act, they said that because they're scared of kick, uh, being kicked out because if you talked about Christ and that, then they'd be kicked out of the synagogue and that. Yeah. We have a comment from Rosemary. Say hi to Rosemary. Hey, Rosemary. Hey. Hi. She says, yes, they were jealous. They were afraid people would not look up to them anymore. Mm, amen. Yeah, that's what happens when you get like status, stature. You, you become very defensive once it starts to get breached. Yeah. So that's definitely how they felt. And do you guys remember where we left off? Uh, yes. Where do we leave off? 28. 28, 28 yeah. 27. Oh, All right. 28. 28. 28. 28. All right. So start on 27. Mosman. Look, the man exclaimed, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Mm. Then they reviled him and said you are his disciple but we are Moses' disciples we know that God spake unto Moses as for this fellow we know not from whence he is the man answered and said unto them why her herein as a marvelous thing that they ye not ye know not from where from whence he is and yet he hath opened my eyes now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins, and doth thou teach us? And they cast him out. Okay, so this might sound bad, but uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of feel bad for the Pharisees. A little, a part of me kind of feels bad because they're, they're, they seem confused. They seem like, like they're, they're lost. Just like everybody else around them, the pagan nations, they were all lost. But since they were, they held themselves to such a high standard, I guess the people like looked at them badly, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of feel bad, and I think, I don't know that they're, they're just as confused as everybody else and that they're questioning it 
and that they're, I don't know. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Ernesto? I kind of agree with you, too, because yet again, Pharisees do believe in God, but yeah. they don't understand him fully to the point where they think that another way that they think of God is right and better than the way that Jesus thinks of God. And, and that's right on point. And so... These people, they, they, they believe in God and, and they, they have this understanding, but um, the fact that, like I said earlier, that they, they put themselves on this pedestal, people feel like they're not deserving of, of um, how do I say, salvation, right? And, but I think, I, you know, my Bible says that everybody is deserving of salvation no matter what you do. And that's why I think Jesus' answer is so so calmly to them because he knows how lost and how confused they are mentally and how disordered their teachings are that he's patient with them even though he could easily just get rid of them mm -hmm. and so that goes to show jesus character and his love and how he's just so forgiving and so merciful amongst everybody who's around no matter how good or bad you think or you may be and so let's go on to verse 35 Oh, hold on. Oh, Adrian. Um, Rosemary says that she's very proud of you all. She loves you all. We love, we love you too, you. Rosemary. Yeah. So another question that came up, how can we relate this situation with the blind man and the Pharisees just putting this man out uh, and compared to today's world when we want to stand up for Christ? Mm. What y'all think? I'm going to put you on the spot, Valeria. What you think? Can you repeat the question? Okay, he was put out of the synagogue for what? Because of ideally this man, uh, for what he truly believes in, right? And everything that he saw. And what happened? He got thrown out of the synagogue. He got kicked out, right? How can we relate that in today's world when people want to stand up for Christ? And you have to say it, believe it with conviction, but what, what, what do you risk dealing with in today's world when you have to stand up for Christ as your true belief and convictions? Judgment. Um, yeah, it's when, like, when you're standing up for Christ and what you believe in, people, they will judge you, and they will judge you in a very harsh way. Mm -hmm. And it's hard sometimes because, you know, it's, we're not as patient as God, um, we try, but it is it is hard sometimes. It is very hard. And I imagine it was hard for him too, but, you know, he still did it because he loves them. And we got to love um, everyone, one another, one another, love our neighbor as, a, as ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it hurts sometimes because sometimes they like to get off topic. They like to bring other things in. And, you know, it's, you want to stay on topic. You're like, no, this is this is what's right and when they don't understand it it like boggles up your brain it's like this like listen to me you know yeah kind of thing and it's hard and like we can relate to that it's like they'll cancel us out they'll like bully us i guess you could say and any of y'all relate to that in a sense no you relate to that in this though i remember seeing this thing on tv where it's like um where it's like, if you don't follow this kind of religion, we're going to, like, hang you, all that stuff. And that also kind of made me think of social studies. What I learned yes. <laughs> that in social studies, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> immigrants. It was, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you had me a little confused. I was like, oh. But, yeah, what was it saying? Well, it's kind of like immigrants. They get judged. They, mm. get, they can get killed. By, by believing in a different religion. So it kind of relates to this because in this time, uh, a lot of people get judged for what they believe in, right? Mm -hmm. And then in olden times, mm -hmm. um, that time where you can, you can get killed yeah. and a lot of stuff can bad can happen to you. And so Valeria, I have a question. For, what were you gonna say? And like when um, you're when you're not following the so the social norms. Yeah, exactly. They'll mm -hmm. push you aside. And so I have a question. So how do you deal with that after after you you're being pushed away? What do you do? 
well, you know, if they're not budging to listen, then I'm kind of just like, okay. But, you know, I make sure, like, I state my reason and I state it very clear on why I'm there and what I'm saying. And then I'm like, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. But this is what I believe. This is what it is. And if you don't want to listen, then that's okay. But just know that if you have questions, I'm here. And then mm-hmm. I'll walk away. And if they bully me, I'll walk away. I'll stand up for what I believe in. Amen. And you know what's so funny is that we're literally like so much more like Jesus than we think. Mm-hmm. Like Jesus had, he he's patient with these people just like Valeria is. And, and, but not once does he force them. Not once does he... Does he kill them for what they're doing? And he's just so patient and he and he's so merciful. And even when he told his disciples, he told his disciples to go on two by two and to go to these these nations and towns and and if that they don't listen to you to do what? To dust the sandals right off your feet and to keep on moving. And so we're so much like Jesus and his character and I love it. I love that you guys are portraying that. And so We'll go on to verse 35. Oh, Josh. Oh, Adrian. Uh, Rosemary says, you're right on, Josh. And she says, amen. Amen. All right. All right. So verse 35, Moswin, we'll start with you. When Jesus heard that, uh, when Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and asked, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said unto him, that thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee and he said lord i believe and he worshiped him and jesus said for judgment i have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be blind wait wait who see may be made blind some pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked are you saying we are blind jesus said to them if you were blind you would have no sin but now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. That's that's powerful. Talk about getting roasted by Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's very powerful. And and so he's like, Who do you think these the so on verse thirty nine it says, For judgment I have come into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who see may be made blind. What do you think he means by that? Mazen, what do you think he means? Like, he comes into the world to um, help people, like, see, like, be woken. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think, Josiah? Oh, wait, you, you're going to say more? No? no. Okay, Josiah, what do you think? Well, I'm thinking the same thing. About same thing? Yeah. David? Mm-hmm. Like, what verse? Uh, 39. Um, I think it's where he's, like, if you don't see the sin that you're doing, he's going to, like, I don't know how to put that to words. Yeah, he's going to humble you. He's going to humble you, but if you, if you do see the sin, he's going to, like, I don't know how to put that to words. He's going to forgive I think I think he's saying that he's going to forgive you, and he's going to allow you to see his mercy, mercifulness, and he'll, and he'll heal you from those, from, because, like, when you, you know, when you're a sinner, and you see all that you've done, it causes trauma. Like, it brings, like, guilt into you. And honestly, I believe that he will heal you from that and allow you to see clearly. And so what do you think, Valeria? The first, um, like, six words. For judgment, I have come into this world. I think that was seven words, actually. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, it's like, you know, for judgment, I have come into this world, like, like I don't know if he means like to be judged by others so that they can see clearly you know those who don't see maybe like you know, think about it and you know maybe your, like your eyes will see what he means you know yeah and then and those who see may be made blind I don't really understand what that means but what I'm kind of thinking is um like to I don't know like make them blind see how it feels you know how you like so they can see how others feel so that they can help them understand better on like what like how to learn i don't know how to put it that yes to see it through someone else's i think it was like what uh i think it was like what you were talking about about how they were confused i think that's what he means by making them blind to show them 
to like I said using the guy for like using his weakness to show his power in order to show the um, in order to show them that they that um, he's more powerful than like something that they don't know so yeah. they're blind by it so they don't know what to do or they're confused and I love how he uses judgment like so he, he comes for judgment and not really con condemnation right and so he, him judging us is more like a like a reality check and he's like putting us in a position where we have to make a choice between whether we're going we're going to continue to follow him or we're going to go back to our ways because he he now wakes you up and shows you what you're doing is bad rather than him condemning us and telling us oh you're going straight to hell what you're doing is horrible and you have no choice you have no 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 option and no chance at uh, revival you know and so I love how it says judgment, and because anybody can be saved, and I, I think that's a that's that's a that's a amazing story in in this within this uh, passage. And so I think we have a lot of time. Should we go into ten or Gus? I just have a question for you. What yes, do you sir. think then about verse number forty? What do you think the purpose of the Pharisees the asking this question? What do, they, what do you think that? I think I think it's like they're getting that reality check. They're getting that realization that that they're in the wrong, and it's like it's like a step towards progression, and I think I think it's like a it shows it shows a character growth. Like many stories, I love stories that show a growth uh, in, in the character and becoming a better man. Actually, Mazen would always talk about what was his name? It was that 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 um oh, crap. It was like a Marvel guy or like. Like the Robin, Red Robin, the Robin guy, Robin Hood, something. I don't know, but like he would talk about how he loves the character, the character growth between that story, and that's really what makes a great story. And I love how it shows uh, a little bit of character growth in the Pharisees. So, what do you think? What do you think, Mazma? Um, yeah, I think it was uh, Jason Todd. He was comparing to him as how of uh, most of his choices and his actions of what he did uh, grew him to be a different person. And that different person, he realized he was, he wasn't that person, um, which was like a villain. And he saw himself, like his sins and everything like that, and bounced back to it and uh, becoming a hero instead. Yeah. And so I think this is, this is a moment where Jesus is showing them their sins, and this is their choice to either bounce back or fall back into it. What do you think, Josiah? Uh, when they ask, are we also blind? Uh, like you were saying that. Jesus was pretty much showing them what they're doing wrong, but I think they're asking, uh, like, like, how would I say, it? like, what are we doing wrong? Like, so, like, mm -hmm. if they want him, okay. uh, them, him to tell them yeah. what they're doing wrong. And and what do you, what do you think they're doing wrong? Well, with all the uh, rules, mm -hmm. I can see, uh, you couldn't carry a mat on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is supposed to be like a happy. So you talk with God, not like yeah, restriction. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think, Ernesto? I agree to Josiah's whatever he just said. Opinion. Yes. I agree with that because yet again, I can add something to that to the point where it's like. The Pharisees are like, what have we done wrong? We don't know anything that we have done wrong. They're, they're basically confused. Mm -hmm. what he is saying. Yeah. And w first of all, we're gonna get you a chair next time. You're gonna you're gonna yeah. be sitting right oh, next man, to me. Like, I, like it yeah, I know. Read it. I know, man. He's <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you're good in this though. <laughs> and so, I think. Uh, I, I like as I'm reading this I'm starting to realize that maybe the Pharisees aren't really who they claim to be like they really they really don't know much mm -hmm. like they're really they're really like just like idiots they're just they're, <laughs> they're just like they, they they're like how do I they're like a like a like a Siri like they just read yeah. what they, they yeah. say what yeah. they read just yeah, repeat yeah, yeah, yeah. it and they don't really know like and it and I think it's kind of cool because I'm seeing them in a new light because I used to think of them as these people who were just like downright ugly bad guys who were just you know kill, like just stomp on everybody else and so now they're they're i'm seeing them as like some confused child you know and i think that's really dope what's up adrian uh rosemary says you go girl by the way to oh, you Ms. Bell. and kayla she hopped on um she says judgment isn't just condemning but saving as well mm. yeah amen Righteous.
righteous Amen. judgment. Yes. Amen. And so do you think we should wrap it up or go to 10? I'll wrap it up. All right. So any final thoughts as we're closing? One thing I noticed, yeah, I forgot what verse it was. I think 16. Yeah. How uh, yeah. the Pharisees, some of them were saying that he's not God, and some of them were saying that he could be. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I, I thought was pretty interesting, some of them believed that he was yeah. the Christ. Yeah. And the other ones, I, I can see. I don't know why they didn't think he was, because he was showing them everything, and no other man could just heal people, uh, make the blind see, raise people from the dead. But I, I think that they all knew that he was gone, but they didn't want to uh, say it, because he didn't come in, in like they thought he would, like come in to save them from the Romans. Right? Yeah, exactly. And like my biggest takeaway from this is like literally like. Like, it's so simple, but the light I see the Pharisees in, like, it's so different now. Yeah. Like, I, I see them as a, com like, in a completely different light, whereas I've been seeing them as I've been studying this whole time, you know? And so, any final thoughts? David, Valeria, Mazwe? No? Valeria? I think all of these stories that we're reading in John, they're very astonishing. Mm -hmm. I, it's just a lot. Yeah. to take in but it helps you understand what Jesus means like to do and he wants oh, to, yeah. you know, to, he wants to help us and he wants you know not just like the good people to know but the people who really are, are struggling the ones who really need help the ones who are really confused mm -hmm. he wants to reach out to them and he's doing it in ways that you know will make them you know like they're jealous they want like he doesn't mean to make them jealous but he knows like they'll chase after it yeah. and maybe like I'm pretty sure some of the Pharisees, because there's ma many Pharisees, I'm sure that, you know, some of them had many questions, and maybe some, like, turned to God. Yeah. And that's what he wants, you know. Like Nicodemus did. did. Mm -hmm. Ernesto? This chapter was very amazing. Amen. Because there is a lot of good stuff in here. And, like, as he said, like, like in the in the in the very last chapters of cha uh, uh, no no <laughs> verses verses <laughs> sorry I'm sorry uh, the the very last chapter uh, oh my you're the good take a deep breath take a deep breath verses <laughs> of the chapter of the chapter um it just amazed me how like like Jesus is all like you may be confused and I will help you. It gave me that kind of thing where it's like, even Pharisees are normal people that don't yeah. even have their own beliefs. Yeah, exactly. Just real quick also, in the beginning of this chapter, unlike the previous chapters that we had, um, you notice how Jesus never said to the blind man, to, uh, keep it a secret. Like yeah. Previously, yeah. He said, go to the Pharisees this time mm -hmm. and show yourself. So, Amen. I'm not interested. Does everything well. for a reason. I just have a comment. You had asked a question earlier, Josh, about um, about what would we do nowadays when we, you know, this whole cancel culture mm -hmm. thing and what have you. And um, I, I just want to remind you all, especially you, the younger ones, the youth, um, you are going to be faced with this daily. You know, Jesus is not very convenient to the world. Yeah. He challenges us. And, and, and he shows us what we're capable of as children of God. And many of us, we decide we're going to remain within our pride. And it's funny how you mentioned how you look now differently at the Pharisees. Your faith even grew today. And, and we, we look at the Pharisees now, as, and I love how you said it, kind of like the Siri of Jesus this time. It, it, it's very clear with them. And yes, but your question was, so then how do we how do we respond to people who are going to be questioning us? They're, people are going to be challenging you. People are going to be questioning you. They're going to be giving you questions that are going to confuse you. Even people that you, I mean, the apostles, are, are the very first question they asked was to kind of get Jesus to do something. And, and, and you're going to come across that. But what does Jesus do? He remains cool. And what does he do? He responds. And how does he respond with love and with kindness, with righteous judgment? Um, who was it that said that, Kayla? 
I believe so. Right. Pointing out to them and allowing them to come to their conclusions <coughs> as to what it is that they're doing. And so always stay firm, guys. There is no gray area. Black and white with this. You know his message, and, 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 and I just love how you brought that about, um, uh, asking what is it that you all should do? Remain firm. That's what you should do. Thank you. Yeah, like he said, he uh, entered this world to re-endure the judgment and everything like that. So each time somebody will judge or something, it gives you uh, more power and belief in it. Amen. Amen. All right, so that's beautiful thought. So let's close in prayer. Anybody would volunteer? If not, I'm just going to point at somebody. Ernesto, you want to close in prayer? Come, come up here in front. Come up here in front. Here, you can sit in my chair. You, you're the big boss. <laughs> big boss that's not so big <laughs> ready sure. thank you Jesus for this day and thank you for teaching us about how you healed the blind man and what great news you have done and yet another miracle that amazes me and all of us as well and that we can all have a great time right after Reflect and Revive and that we can all do good. We can have a fun time tomorrow and the day before that as well. Or in the day after that. Sorry. In Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. You all did amazing, and the theme today was hats. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you all for joining us. Yes. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Where are they still?